Tom, and I'm that guy on the radio. Later on on the show this morning, we'll be telling you about a guy in Japan who gets paid for doing absolutely nothing. If you think that's your kind of work, stick around. Details coming up. 10% chance of showers and thunderstorms tonight, about a 40% chance coming up this afternoon. Well, a high of 89. Right now, it's 69 degrees in Crossing and partly cloudy skies at 6.30 here on Wednesday morning. Yes, news brief. An oppressive heat wave drags on in California. Officials continue to warn. You know, I think I just might be getting the hang of this. Hi, I'm Russ. I'm rebuilding a 1977 Mobile Traveler motorhome. This is all about the MT and me. Is simply unacceptable. Inspectors say security is being undermined. Well, welcome back to the MT and me. A little wrap up here to start this week off and a look at uh, just what we've accomplished in the remodeling of uh, my radio studios. Here in 104.9 we've been on our new computer system for about a week now. All of our ball games and sports are running properly. I've just about figured out how to do my live show here. Still a little kinky here and there, but it's it's not too bad, and it's coming along. I guess this old dog can learn a new trick or two after all. Uh, all the other stations are working good. Our uh, other main FM, QLite 99.5, also has a live morning operation, and they're coping over there as well. We'll show you that studio here in just a moment. And uh, our other FM, uh, 102.7 The Light, which is completely automated. That was the first station that we put on the new system. And it's been running pretty smoothly now for two weeks. And then all sports radio AM 800 is also getting things handled with their new system as well. So, there's still a, a little bit of a wiring hookup here and there. Maybe a little just cleaning up of the wiring because I kind of threw things together rather fast in a couple of instances to get these systems on the air. So now it's time to go back and make it look good as well as sound good. It's an engineer thing. you got to know about it, alright? So, anyway, I'll show you around what's going on here and then... We've got a few projects with Pearl we'd like to get to this week as well here on the MT and Me. So let's get going. Well, as you remember, the first changeover we did was here in 102.7 The Light, our fully automated uh, modern Christian music FM station got the old system out after we got the new in and running it's been on the air for two weeks now and as near as we can tell hasn't missed a beat so it was our first success story but it was arguably the most simple of the changeover so it was a good place to start because once we got out of here and went into other stations they got progressively more complicated Next on the list was AM 800, our all sports talk station. Here again, pretty much constant satellite feed, so not a lot of complication, but it does also carry uh, Cardinal baseball coverage, and so we had to add that into the mix because there's a special subroutine to run the ball games automatically, so we had to be sure all that was set up properly. And it was, and it works which is good because we had to transfer that to 104.9 as well. But before we did 104.9, we switched over our other FM, QLite 99.5, where it was a little bit different. This station had been running uh, kind of an older version of our new software, and uh, so we kind of thought it would be a simple transfer, but it turned out that there was just enough difference that it was a, a little more complex than we anticipated. Nonetheless, part of the equipment was compatible. 
So, whenever we swapped out the computer systems and the program, we simply plugged into the rest. All of the wiring was already in place. That was a big plus right there. No additional wiring or rewiring necessary. And the conversion was a little bit easier because of that. I say a little bit because there's still a learning curve uh, that we're still going through here on uh, especially 99.5 FM and on 104.9. And the switchover in here, in this studio for 104.9 Today's Country, took the most rewiring because we had to take the old system out and completely wire in the new system along with uh, provisions for running two separate ball game subroutines, Cardinals and of course the Razorbacks, this is Arkansas. Uh, all that plus a news feed and our satellite feed had to all be integrated. So lots more wiring, lots more just point-to-point -point work. But the good news is it's all done now and it's all working. Knocking on wood again that things will keep going well because at this point, although we are still figuring out the ins and outs of this new software program, as far as the technical plant goes, our conversion is complete. And we are operating with brand new broadcast automation on all four of the CrossFit radio stations. It's been a long three weeks. And there's still some stuff to be worked out. But I feel pretty accomplished by it all. That's a good thing. Oh, there really is one more room I need to show you, though. And that's here, in our main production room. Where we didn't have to do a whole lot of rewiring, but we did have to add in a second computer system to be compatible with all the other on-the-air things. So, now, we have our older system here that is still fired up and still running and still working plus the new one that's been added in so we've got a little more counter space taken up but other than that things are pretty basic in here and it didn't require a whole lot of additional work so now that the toughest and biggest part of our renovations here at Crossing Radio are over and done with and most of the technical work is done that's going to give me a little extra time to get back on those projects at home, especially on Pearl, because I've really missed working on her, and I'm looking forward to getting some things done. Well, I promised we'd do some work related to Pearl. It's later, and we're going to do some right now. We have the clean fan and the clean pulley right here and we're going to give them at least one good coat of paint with rust-oleum to be sure they don't rust again. And then we'll have them both ready whenever we get ready to reassemble the engine in Pearl. Now that may still be down the road a little bit and we'll probably have to do a second coat on both of these. But to get the first coat on today, that's going to be some progress in my book. Now, <laughs> I debated exactly how to approach painting this fan. It's not real lightweight. I mean, the thing's made of steel all over. So uh, I didn't know I'd just lay it on a surface and paint it and then flip it over. But I do have this piece of PVC that fits in the shaft hole nice and snugly. I think if I do that... I can do this. And that way, my fan is right here so that with a little bit of care, I can access all around it. Let's see if that works so pretty good. I haven't even shaken my paint up yet. If this works, I think I can put the uh, the fan pulley on there as well and paint it in the same way, at least the outside of it. I can just lay it down and get a coat on the inside. At least that's the plan, okay? A 
come you always drop the cap? Never fails. Hmm. All right. Here goes nothing. Shiny. Actually, it's uh, it's not shiny. It's a satin finish, but shinier than it was. And I think it looks great. So we're gonna let that sit for just a few minutes, so that the paint can dry a little bit, and then we'll look at maybe a second coat, or at least getting a first coat on the fan pulley next. Being that I'm such a patient person and don't really want to wait on the paint to dry, I've got this uh, fan pulley sitting on a, a piece of concrete to keep it up off the surface so that I can go all the way around it and spray paint the outside of it and let it be drying while the fan is drying. Double duty. Yay. I don't think I missed any spots, and if I did, I'll get them on the second coat. Yeah. So while we're waiting on paint to dry, let's take a look at the front of Pearl's engine, see what kind of attention it needs. So the only thing that's actually shiny is the idler pulley here. It actually looks fairly new, but it's also just a, a lightweight aluminum pulley, which is all that's necessary. This is the power steering pump. It moves freely, feels like it's okay, and hopefully the steering system is all working just fine. This, of course, crankshaft. We're not going to turn it by hand. This is where the fan goes. This actually is running the water pump. And here again, the water pump feels real good. It's firm, but it's free, and there's no movement in it at all. It's not wobbling. That's a good sign. That means the bearings are good. This, the air conditioner, I have no idea. I do know the system's completely depressurized, and uh, I don't know. It looks like it's had some leakage around the top of the cylinder here, so I'm really not sure. As far as movement, yes, the compressor turns, and it may still be perfectly good. The clutch is still independent from the pulley, so there may not be a problem there. Only time will tell. Now that gets us to the alternator, and I'm kind of thinking I might want to replace it. I just don't like the way it sounds. It's got a little, little bit of a grind to it as you turn it. 
has a motor sound, which it's got a winding in there, so it could be. Uh, but then again, maybe it's something that should be replaced since it is awfully important to keep power going to the engine and everything else on Pearl. Now the other thing about the front is it is dirty, filthy. There's just grime caked up on it. It all needs to be caked off, scraped off, and of course there are areas that are rusted. You can see rust here, here, just surface rust, coating rust. Nothing's in danger of rusting apart, but that surface rust will eventually uh, cause a problem if you just let it go. So I want to scrape all this good, brush it off real good, and maybe hit it with some of the Rust-Oleum paint as well. I don't necessarily want to disassemble all of these frames because they've been there a long time and they are very firmly settled where they are. But uh, it may come to that. Here again, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. But this gives us a little idea of how much work is going to be involved on the front of the engine before we even think about putting that freshly painted fan back on it and putting those brand new fan belts on it too. That's coming, but there's some things we have to do first. And doing a next day checkup on one of those projects fan looks great. It's all nice and dry now. Paint coat is good shape. I don't think we even need a, a second coat on it. It looks just great the way it is. Nice black satiny finish. It's absolutely beautiful and it appears that it's all covered up. The pulley also looks fantastic. I haven't done the inside of it yet. I'll have to give it a, a spray and a promise, so to speak, because it also has a, a little bit of surface rust on it. We can take care of that with no problem. The outside here is going to be great. And of course, all this actually fits together with somewhat like that. The bolts going in and the pulley covering over the uh, water pump connection. So I think we'll be in real good shape there. Success on the fan cleaning and repainting. So that's one engine project that we can uh, check off the list, so to speak. Huh? And speaking of list, there are a couple of things I can mark off my go by list. One thing, Hacksaw blade for carb modifications. I don't need that anymore because we've already done the modifications on the carburetor. And accessory fan belts. I have bought all three of them. We had them here, ready to go. There's still plenty more to buy on the list, so maybe I'll look for those carburetor mounting nuts and get a little sealant. So perhaps we can look at getting the carb mounted on top of the engine and then focus on getting it all hooked up properly, which means, uh, of course, I'll have to get vacuum hoses for that because that's going to be one of the requirements. So there's all that. But that's for another week. For now, we've made some progress. We uh, got something done on Pearl, which is good because I've been missing working on Pearl. Now, the good news is that I'm going to have more time to work on her now because most of the, what you want to call it, nuts and bolts work at my studios as far as installing the new on-air computers is over and done with. It's, uh, it's kind of like I told Ree, <laughs> all the interesting stuff is done. Now it's just sitting down, scratching our heads and trying to figure out how to use the software. That's not very exciting on video, so we'll take care of that. And in the meantime, I get a little more time in the afternoons and evenings to get back here and work on my baby. All right, so we'll look forward to that next week and in weeks to come. Thank you so much for sticking with us, watching, and enjoying these videos. Thumbs up, like, share. It really helps the YouTube numbers, okay? And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already because we'd love to have you along for the ride each and every week here on the MT and Me. 
There's a link below where you can buy me a coffee to help fund the Pearl Restoration Project. And you'll find a link to the website, dmtandme.com. Please check them out. And check us out every Sunday morning right here on uh, the MT and me. Till next week, I'm Russ, and we will talk later. Well, there's still a lot on here. One by one. That's how it works. One by one.